Hi guys, welcome to episode five of Hillfield's Youth TV. <laughs> Tash is just dancing. <laughs> just love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so today we have same old rest of the week. We have that joke. We also have Tash versus Joab. <laughs> and we got something new. We got something new for them, haven't we? We do, yeah. What's that? What's that, um, Tash? Uh, so we had two really amazing <laughs> ladies come and dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, and me. <laughs> <laughs> She's dancing with Daisy and Grace. Daisy and Grace did an amazing job. Well she done, guys. Well. She did as well. She did. Oh, no. She did as well. Uh, could you cut me out a bit? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's coming up a bit later. Yeah, she did great, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> we're going to have verse of the week. Hey, guys, and welcome to verse of the week. Today, we are going to read from 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. And it just says this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, and um, Jeb's just going to talk to you about that. So yeah, um, this all sounds pretty amazing, doesn't it? It does. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I'm going to read it again. Okay. And you'll see how motivating it is. Alright. Right? Okay, I'm just ready. Listen, just listen to this, guys, right? If my people who are called by my name, I've got an accent, yeah. can humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. Wait, what? Um, what? Turn from that wicked ways? Did you, did you know that bit was there? Uh, I read it, but. The turn from their wicked ways? Hmm. Wait, wait. What, we got to turn from our wicked ways as well? It means that we got to stop, yeah. Uh, right. we we'll stop that then. But the point is, <laughs> <laughs> the point is, we love to mo motivate you guys and inspire you, but we would be doing an injustice if we're not being real as well. And the word says, we turn from our wicked ways and Sometimes you think like wicked ways is like just oh I, I don't cheat, I don't you know, I don't steal. It's like no but you have a jealousy inside you sometimes. You you um you look at your brother or sister with anger sometimes. Uh, you, sometimes you really wanna hurt someone and those are wicked ways. Yeah. Or do you know what I mean? So even if you don't do it, even if you don't do it, it, yeah, you're still feeling it definitely. And those are things that that creep in, like a victim mentality, where you assume that everyone is to blame for all your problems, but you never assess yourself. We need God to help us to turn away from that, and for Him to show you His fullness. Um, but we allow these things in our lives because of all these. Um, certain things that the enemy can use against us you know what I mean and those are things that we have in us so what I'm trying to say really is put your faith in him and he will transform your mind and your life and there's no one else that can do it that was verse of the week and now we're gonna go into Tash versus Joba <laughs> Tash versus Joab. Or Joab versus Tash. Right, Tash. Joab. Are you ready? Boring ready. Oh, God. All right. Mm -hmm. Take my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Strong independent man. <laughs> this is all I have. I nearly fell off my chair. Shut <laughs> <laughs> up. Anyway, welcome, hey, guys, to Tash versus Joab. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> today we're doing Bible trivia. What was that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit like... Yeah. Yeah. We're doing Bible trivia, so we're going to ask each other questions. Three questions. Mm -hmm. and... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the... <laughs> we're going to answer three questions, and the person who gets the most wins. That's we're standing right. at two... <laughs> yeah. We're standing at two, two at the moment mm -hmm. in the whole series. Yeah. And... Uh... I can't let my team down again. Yeah, well... Anyway. They're relying on me. We'll see, won't we? 
We will. I'll start. Natasha Howe. Yes. Who is the author of the book of Revelation? Just a random guess, because I've got no clue, Peter. Wrong. Who is it? John. Oh man. Okay. Which gospel is most concerned with the mystery and identity of the person of Jesus? Which gospel? is the most concerned yeah. with the mystery and identity of the person of Jesus. Mark? No, it's John. <sighs> I was going to say John, but... <sighs> Who recognised Jesus as the Messiah when he was presented at the temple as a baby? No, oh. it is Simeon. Simeon? What tribe is Paul from? Judah. No, Benjamin. Paul. Yes. Was shipwrecked mm -hmm. in what country? I don't even know geography. <laughs> On what island? Constitutes as an island. <laughs> what time is it? Wait, have we finished? I don't know. Okay, so are you passing this one then? Yeah, because I don't know what a, like I don't know what an island or country is. All right, so the answer is Malta. That's where he was. I was, had no idea about that. Who was the first person to come across the injured man in the parable of the Good Samaritan? Who was the first person to come across the injured man in the parable of the Good Samaritan? Is it Pharisee? A priest priest okay that technically is a Pharisee but I'm not gonna give myself that okay yes. who asked Pilate for Jesus's body after the crucifixion Mary Joseph of Arimathea oh. To what city was Paul, Saul, not Saul, Paul. To what? To what city was Saul travelling when he encountered a great and blinding light? Damascus? Mm. Come on, you lads! Come on, you lads! We've done it again, haven't we? We've done it again! Bring me sunshine in your eyes! Alright, I'm done. I'm done celebrating. So that was Tash versus Joab, and I am now in the lead. Just saying. <laughs> now in the lead, but it's all right. <laughs> Come on, Tash. You did the best you could. You did the best. You did the best you could. Here's Dad jokes. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Dead jokes in five, four, three, two, one. I've got this awful disease where I can't stop telling airport jokes. The doctor says it's terminal. I went to the doctors the other day and said, have you got anything for wind? He gave me a kite. A sandwich walks into a bar. The barman says, sorry, we don't serve food here. I went to the paper shop, they were blown away. I tried water polo the other day, but my horse drank. So that was Dad Jokes, and here is Demonstrate It. 
Hi guys, welcome to Demonstrate It. I'm Joa. I'm Tash. And today we're going to be talking about the transformational power of Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed someone who was one way and then their behavior changed completely? They became a whole different person. Kind of like you, Tash, at some point, don't you reckon? She was a horrible person. And now she's a bit better, to be honest. Um, but let me explain what happened in between, you know? Say, for example, I can fill this bin with negativity, yep. jealousy, and a bit of lying. And sometimes I can pick and choose what one I have in the bin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the lying isn't there. And then I assume, oh, I'm actually all right. But you forgot about the jealousy and the negativity. And this is what happens when we think that we've changed because you've taken out a few things about yourself, but God is constantly challenging us to keep going to him. And the only way you can transform is through him. And this is what he does. So he's taken all this stuff out and you're now thinking, oh no, I'm good. I'm good, God. But the problem is your bin is still dirty, but it's dirty with germs and things that you can't even see yourself. Now, unless you can acknowledge that, God, I can't see them, but you can. He's the only one that can transform you. Because as, as, as long as you think that they're temporarily gone, like the lion and whatnot, and you assume that means that you're okay, you'll never be transformed. You have to go to him. And he's the only one that can completely change a person. We can try to, we can try to talk to you. We can try to be there for you but he is the only one that can transform you. If you're feeling like, God, I do this thing and I don't want to do it, you cannot rely on people. Like, you can't rely on us to change you or transform you. Only he can do that. But what we can do is tell you that he's, we can only point you to him. So that has demonstrated. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Bonus footage. Uh, 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 uh. Bonus footage. Uh, uh. We're not. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that yet. Mm -hmm. There will be bonus footage. Don't worry. Right now. But you have a, a dance with Daisy and Grace coming up next. Actually, I think you forgot about. It. Did you forget? Uh, 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 it is in the plan. That's that's what we planned. I'm uh, pretty sure. Uh, so here is the dance from Daisy, Grace, and our very own Tash. Searching, your love was never far. You made a way to get to me. You were the whisper, leading me to your heart. Forever I belong to you. Now I can see clearly my God, you for me. You won't let go. Your love won't let me down. And I know it's you. Yeah, I know that you're.
fear I want all of you, you'll never change your love won't let me down Love won't let me Hi guys, so welcome to our new little segment we call HYTV Sports Yeah <laughs> So um, I was just chatting to one of my mates outside church, you know, and um, I was just talking about basketball and I'm literally LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Dwayne Wade. I mean, some of the best dunkers of all time, of all time. You know, Michael Jordan might be the best dunker of all time. LeBron James is the best player, but anyway, Michael Jordan might be the best dunker of all time, but um, Tash, who do you reckon you'd say is the best dunker of all time? The greatest dunker of all time? A chocolate hobnob. What? Because, like, on the dunking scale, on the biscuit scale, like, a chocolate hobnob has, like, the perfect consistency that you can hold it in your cup of tea for, like, five seconds. And when you pull it out, like, the chocolate melts and, like, the consistency of the biscuit, it's just... It's just amazing. Then you can eat it and it's just... Oh, it just brings me pure joy. But I definitely think the second place would be a rich tea. Because with a nice cup of tea, like you get your rich tea biscuit and you dunk it. But it's like a three second dunker, so it's not quite the same as a hobnob. But it's like a three second dunker, have a little swizzle around in there, and you eat it. And the best part about a rich tea is you can go for a bonus dunk of one second. So you pop it back in, and then it's like, mmm. Delicious. So they're the best dunkers. That was HYTV Sports. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers. This one goes out to all my people in the struggle. Do you remember way out? <laughs> it's tired right now for everyone. It's tired. I just feel so lost. <laughs> I just need a haircut. Shape up and on and fade. That's all I'm asking for is a haircut, please. <laughs> anyone got a razor? Is there anyone got a razor? Just shape me up. Just give me a cut. Kids, I'm alright. I know I don't have kids, but shut up.